Paula Fla here too. Good evening. Leading our news bulletin here on BCN for tonight. Hazardous waste buried years ago around the island has this week been searched by the Departments of Death in collaboration with the Environment Department and assisted by consultant John O'Grady, commissioned from Environmental Catalysts, SPREP. The hazardous waste, such as asbestos and chemicals, have been a long-standing issue, with more calls from the public to environmentalists and to government to address these concerns. That call has been answered with a swift decision to bury the asbestos on the island rather than ship back to New Zealand or bury at sea. However, people are also asking why bury on the island when efforts are underway to locate previous hazardous waste. Several years ago, AusAid identified the mismanagement of hazardous chemicals in the Pacific as a serious environmental concern. They represent an ever-present risk to the health and well-being of Pacific Islanders. So SPREP developed a project entitled Persistent Organic Pollutants in Pacific Island Countries, or POPs in PICs. POPs are a group of 12 particularly hazardous chemicals that have been singled out by the Stockholm Convention for urgent action to eliminate them from the world. They include PCBs, mainly found in electricity transformers, and several pesticides that are very persistent and toxic to the environment. PCBs are a suspected carcinogen that has already spread all over the world and entered the food chain. These chemicals can also seep into the ground, water and contaminate wells and water tables. The departments involved with searching potential sites were unavailable for comment. We will bring you more on the results of the investigation. Niue is amongst six countries in the Pacific to take part in a project to map out endangered cultural heritage sites with funds from the Secretary of the Pacific Community. Taonga Niue led a consultation yesterday to discuss this proposed project that Niue has decided to focus on old village settlement sites and endangered heritage sites within villages. Moira Enitama says that the aim is to make intangible cultural heritage tangible by documenting valuable information to enrich Niue's cultural history and foster a greater appreciation for not only these sites but the stories that come with them. In the consultation, it was noted that despite the international conventions Niue has ratified in line with preservation of cultural heritage, there remains a gap as there is no specific legislation on the island to protect cultural heritage sites and land is also owned by private landowners. The idea is to plot areas on maps and get a more in-depth knowledge of cultural practices or heritage including the intangible assets. Taonga Niue says that in order for the project to be a success, there needs to be support from the villagers in identifying areas and approval from landowners. The Department of Justice Lands and Surveys have also agreed to assist with the mapping exercises. Callers to the Radio Sunshine Talkback show on Monday night were disappointed their lands housing honeybee hives have not been paid for. Some callers suggested a non-payment of 20 years for land usage has also caused friction because of the agreement with Niue Honey. With some asking for a mega $25 annually, they decided to restrict access to the owner who advised payments to be collected from Treasury. However, that is not the case as Niue Honey is a private enterprise. Since our talkback show, we received a response from the owner of Niue Honey who advised payments have been authorised for each site in August. However, since that correspondence, we have received further information regarding the honey saga. Owners of Niue Honey responded to BCN inquiries, saying they are very aware that the landowners have not received their site rental since Cyclone Hathas devastated everything, and although the bees almost all died and there was no production for four years, Things are now positive. Funds were transferred a month ago, but surprised there were no funds. However, BNZ in New Zealand will transfer monies today to cover the five-year site rental of $125 plus the production local staff has tallied. We most certainly want a positive relationship with all landowners and would like to continue to the future. 
They also added if the company is successful in the renewal of the organic certification, they can a have a firm sales contract for 2012, which means an increase in rental. Some landowners said they are pleased with the news and welcome the change to receive their monies. 30 landowners are expected to receive an added Christmas bonus if all rentals for the last five years are paid. Drafting of Nui's first gender policy has taken two weeks of consultations and the first draft will be completed by the end of this week. This is not the first time this has been discussed, but it's a revival of an earlier document developed for the National Plan of Action for Women from 2003 to 2008. But this time round, they will be looking at gender issues and not only focusing on women. Bridget Leduc, a gender officer from SBC, was on the island for two weeks to help collate information to develop a policy that will mainstream gender issues based on needs identified by the country. The goal of the policy would be to establish and strengthen equal rights and equal opportunities for women and men to use their full potential to participate in the economic, social, political, spiritual and cultural development of Niwe. The policy also looks to strengthen gender equality in all sectors of society, but how this can be achieved will be determined by the outcomes of discussions. Gaylene Tasmania, the Director of Community Affairs, says that the outcomes identified as priority areas are strengthening gender equality in the family and in the society, improving enabling conditions for the full participation of women and men in economic development and food security, achieving equitable participation of women and men in decision-making bodies and leadership positions in all sectors, gender responsive government programs and policies in all sectors. Gaylene also says that at this present moment there is no set time frame for implementation as the final policy would need to be presented to the new assembly and government for endorsement. 16 rugby nations has kick-started the first leg of the IRB rugby series in the Gold Coast, Australia and Little Niwe is in the lineup today for the first game against Fiji. Niwe, who qualified at the South Pacific Games, has only managed the Australian leg of the IRB series. Unfortunately, the qualifying game for Wellington leg of the tournament in Samoa a few weeks ago did not go so well for the team. Even though Niwe is relatively small, they're hoping to surprise veterans of the game. Face game for Niwe this afternoon was against Fiji and results were not available when this news bulletin went to air. We will bring you an update of the results in our future news bulletin. As for the 15s team heading to the Foru Cup in Papua New Guinea tomorrow, we wish you all the best. Makini Women's Weaving Group put their wares out on display to showcase the fruits of their labour. The market program that began last year is an opportunity for the group that normally have their weaving sessions at Makini Hall to show off what they have produced throughout the year. The new Council of Women's President said that though there were not that many handicrafts or fabrics on display, women were very particular and the works were of very good quality. She says that there were apparent differences in comparison to some crafts displayed at show days. The event sponsored by the Council of Women was also an opportunity to make sales. For some, they decided to keep their craft work while others have decided to sell it in their shop. The final program for the year will be the continuation of a cooking workshop sharing knowledge on different ways of food preparation that will be held on Wednesday next week. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you have an enjoyable weekend ahead and you can join us again next week. Don't forget to check out Namkulu's Market Day this coming Saturday.